grateful, Lord, for the spirit, Lord, that you got, that you've brung, and uh, God, that you've let our, our church get in on. I want to say thank you for it. Lord, I think about this past year, and I think about all the heartache. God, all the decisions that we made, all those things that we toiled over. Uh, God, the, the decision, Lord, that uh, we were going to break down our church services and go online. God, I, I remember toiling over that decision. But God, I can honestly say that you have been great and you have blessed us mightily through every ounce of that. Lord, thank you for, for building your church. Lord, and you said that when you built it and we didn't build it, that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And God, we, we're seeing the goodness of God in the fact that this church is being built and the gates of hell are not prevailing against this place. And so God, we thank you for it. Lord, I pray, God, that you build this place. God, let us be everything that you've called us to be in this next year. God, help us to work harder than we've ever worked. Not, not our own work of righteousness, but God, help us to work that that's in us, Christ in us. God, I, I pray, Lord, that you can get glory out of this place and that your name be magnified. Lord, bless it. We'll bless your name and we'll praise you for all that you do. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Won't you stand with us? Let's sing a little bit this morning.
do battle belongs. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. Let it is finished. 
You can take your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians 15, if you would, this morning. So those of you that have been here on our Wednesday nights, um, and I have done this a couple of Sunday mornings, but uh, I think I've only did it once or twice. Uh, but if we're ever going to get finished with it, I'm going to have to do some on Sunday mornings. Um, we have been in discipleship training on Wednesday nights, and what, what it, let the, kind of let me give you the brief rundown. When I say discipleship training, I want you to understand that this is not a one time thing that we're doing, uh, that we're we're, we're saying that, you know, because it's roughly going to be 20, 21, 22 weeks, uh, but we're, we're not saying that in 20, uh, 21 or 22 weeks that you're going to understand everything there is to understand about being a disciple uh, of Jesus Christ. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not saying that. I want, you, I want you to make sure that we get that. When I, when I say that, sometimes I think that we may get the idea that discipleship is a series of messages or that it is uh, it, it can be programmed. And to make sure that we don't do that, that's why we're teaching like we are right now because what we're doing is setting a focus and a goal and an aim for the existence of our church for the rest of its life. We are setting something in stone that we can aim at, that we can set our focus on, that until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, that we can set our mission on this one thing. And what is that thing? The goal of making disciples. And so we, we're, we're going through this thing to understand what does that entail, number one. And, and then number two, is, is it for me? You know, it, it, I want to say that it is for everybody, but maybe where you're at right now, you may think, man, this, this idea that you're putting out there Man, it just ain't for me. Well, look, just hold on and let God convict you. Let God work. 
and, and let God do His thing in your heart. One thing I've learned is, man, there's been a lot of things I've done in my life and tried to be the Spirit of God for other people. And it never worked out. <laughs> it never worked out. They always ended up getting mad. They always ended up doing something that I didn't want them to do and do right. Why? Because a lot of times if the Word of God and the Spirit of God ain't working at the same time, man, it just don't matter. <laughs> Because you can have the Word of God and the flesh be involved and it ain't going to work. You can hear it and you can, you, can, you can teach it and you can beat it in somebody's head and it just doesn't always work out like that, right? So we want to make sure that what we're doing, we're doing it in such a way that you're not doing it in, in, in terms of signing up for a program. In terms, yeah, man, I'm going to do that. Sounds like fun. If it, if it doesn't sound like that you can do that for the rest of your life, then I wouldn't get on board with it. And, and I say that, I mean that with my whole heart. That I want this to be the focus of everything that we do to carry out the gospel and carry out the Great Commission for the rest of our existence. Amen? Uh, quickly, you see we've got the review there as normal. <laughs> uh, and number one, we, we've been working through these goals, the goals of discipleship. And, and obviously we could spend a lot of time reviewing a whole lot of things. But to understand where we are, uh, we, we dealt with the first goal was to establish your disciple in a meaningful relationship with God through the Word of God and prayer. Through the Word of God and prayer. And when I say that, I, 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 I want you to get, like I've always said, when we hear that, establish your disciple in a meaningful relationship with God. Make sure that we all understand in the room, if we ourselves are not being established in a meaningful relationship with God through the Word of God in prayer, we will never take anybody to this goal because it's actually not a goal that's being fulfilled in our own lives. Does that make sense? So, so if if we're not try, if we're not headed in this direction, then the first thing we got to do before we do anything else is get going in this direction, right? Then number two, we dealt with uh, establish your disciple in a biblical friendship and fellowship of the believers. Fellowship of the believers. So we understand. Here's the deal. If if your if the person you have won to Jesus Christ does not have any friendships with people in this local church, then we can't expect them to really put a whole lot of trust, a whole lot of faith in us as people if we're not willing to build this thing on a biblical friendship and, 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 uh, and eventually establishing them in the fellowship of these believers in this church. Amen? Does that make sense? Uh, so we, we got to understand that this is going to take part. Uh, when, when, we, when we win somebody to Jesus Christ, it is up to us to bring them to a place of, of biblical friendship and, and to where we understand uh, here's the thing. We, I think sometimes we miss this idea of biblical friendship thinking that we've got to be just like the person that we won to the Lord. I, I think we miss it and we think, man, well, if I'm not like them, I don't have anything in common with them. I really can't be friends with them. That's why we, we tag on this whole thing, not, not carnal, not worldly, not temporal, but biblical friendship. Because you don't have to have anything in common with people when the Bible is the commonality between you two. When you've established a biblical friendship, it's based upon your relationship with Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done in your heart and what Jesus is doing in your life. And therefore, you can establish that same friendship with a person. Amen? So number three, establish your disciple in the, in the spiritual... I missed the word. In the spiritual life and service of the local church. In the spiritual life and service of the local church. Uh, we dealt with this thing for a number of weeks, but basically when we get down to number three here, we're, we're, we're working to establish people in a church. And let me say this again. If you are not established in the spiritual life 
and service to this local assembly. It's going to be awful hard to take anybody to that place. Right? We'll just throw this out there for just to be throwing it out there. Eventually, one of these days, we won't have more to offer other people that are from the outside to this church. Why? Do we, we're, we're not here for the allurement. We want to have more to offer though, right? But you know what we got to have? We got to have able-bodied, able, abled ministers in this church if we're ever going to offer more. Because how many of you have been in churches that didn't, that had people, not ministers? There's a whole lot of places we can put a whole lot of bodies with air in them with breath in their lungs, and say, here, do this, and, and do this, and do that. But listen, that's not the goal. The goal is to minister. So we want to make sure that we're established in, in the spiritual life and service to our local church. And number four, that the one we'll look at today, establish your disciple as an active participant in the work of the Lord is an active participant in the work of the Lord. Now I ask you to take your Bible and turn to 15, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. If you want to look down at verse number 58, we'll be there in a minute or it's on your outline, I think, and, and I think it's on the screen. Uh, so we're going to today to define what is the work of the Lord. You may ask the question, what is the work of the Lord and, and how, do we, how do we get there? How do we understand what the work of the Lord is? Well, look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved, uh, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now make sure we get this, that, that serving the Lord, serving the Lord through the gifts and talents and abilities that we have and the work of the Lord are not the same thing. Make sure we understand that. The, the, the way we serve God at this church in the spiritual life and service to this church is not necessarily the same as the work of the Lord. Now how do we know that? Well... In your outline, I, I wish I should have gotten me one. In your outline, number one, Brother Charlie, the work of the Lord is the work the Lord did while he was on this earth working. Does that, does that, does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> I, I, I know when you, when you hear that, man, you think, thanks, bro. When you hear that, you may think, oh, uh, man, the work of the Lord's got to be real complicated. The work of the Lord must be a real hard thing to get our minds wrapped around. And, and then we, we kind of give the definition, <laughs> the work of the Lord is the work the Lord did while he was on the earth working. And so then you think, well, that, that wasn't all that complicated. <laughs> I, I, you know, there, there really is a very sincere simplicity in Jesus Christ. You know, we like to make it hard. We like to confound our, our wit. We like to confound the wise with all the things that we do in church. And here it is. The ch it has no mystical thing to it. It is literally the work the Lord did while the Lord was here working. So we understand that, hey, that's the work of the Lord. Well, what, what was that really? What was that thing that he did here on this earth? John 4, verse 34. 34. My meat is to finish the work. Now, now here it is. Whose work was it? It was the Father's work. John 4 verse 34. It was the Father's work. John 17 and verse number 4. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now, now get this. This is, about, this, is, this is Jesus praying to the Father. And he says, I have finished the work. But now notice this is well before John chapter 19. So he has finished the work before he ever actually died on the cross. Well, people would say, well, the, the work he came to finish, the work he came to do was dying on the cross. But, but obviously John 17 gives us the idea that the work was finished before the death ever happened. 
And so we ask ourselves the question, what, what was that work that the Lord did? And we, some of you have been over this time and time again. You say, man, I'm tired of hearing this. But we got to make sure that we get this in our spirit, that we understand at this church when somebody says, what is the work of the Lord? What is the work of the Lord? We understand and we can define the work of the Lord as being the work the Lord did while he was here working. And then we take somebody to John 17 and show and we can look and we can see all those things that Jesus did. And we'll get to them here in a few minutes. But what, what was that thing? Jesus had finished the work, get this, of making disciples. Jesus had finished the work of, of making disciples. You see there, up under that point, God's twofold, twofold mission for every believer. Number one, to have a ministry in the church. To have a ministry in the church. And then number two, to have a mission in the world. To have a ministry in the church. And then to have a mission in the world. First, we'll, we'll look at our ministry in the church and try to get a grasp on, on what God's trying to show us as far as the ministry that we have in the church, in this church, in the local body that God's given us. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, now get this right here. This is, this is interesting how God says this. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, comma, or semicolon. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Now, now, now just, just I, I, I hope this kind of, as the repetition that God gives here, if any man speak or if any man minister. Now, I think we can all decipher that them are two different things, right? There's, there's obviously, <laughs> there's this speaking gift. And then there's, there's this other gift. But now notice this. Notice the speaking gift. It is set, as, it is set apart to itself. And, and here it is. Let him speak as the oracles of God. So we understand that, man, that's, a, that's, that's in there, right? Like you cannot get away from, if he's going to speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, right? Everybody try it with me right there. You, get, you good or no? Uh, you got to get this. If you don't get this, you don't get the rest of it. But if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. No, no, the, 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 does, that, does that make sense? When, when we're talking, we're talking about this speaking thing and then we're talking about this ministering thing. And to understand where I'm going with this, I think we've all got to understand there's there's an there's an um, there's a way to kind of lay this thing out that I think would help us. Um, but but I, I think sometimes we miss when we think that the only way a man is going to minister in a church is if he speaks. Now, obviously, if you're going to speak, you've got to speak as the oracles of God. But if you're going to minister, you're going to do it with the ability that God gave you to minister. What's that mean, Brother Lee? Man, I think back the seven years that we've been here, almost seven years, and I look around and I think, man, if God haven't, had not get, uh, given some serious ability to some people in this church, then it wouldn't look nothing like it looks now. You get where I'm going when I say that? If God had not given some people some serious ability to work 
into labor. Man, what, what's the girl? What's, listen, I, I'm going to tell you something. I feel like if I put my mind to it, I can do almost anything. But there is one thing that I don't even want to put my mind to do. I never, ever, ever, I'll be satisfied till the day I die if I never have to hold another paintbrush. <laughs> Shane, on the other hand, Shane gets that paintbrush and son, he's just a whipping around. <laughs> he's gone around this whole, the, 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 gone around the whole uh, top of the church here, just painting it up. And, I'm, and, and he looks like he's enjoying it. And it's painstaking for me to even watch. I mean, it literally it hurts my soul to look at, the, at a dude painting. I'm, I'm thinking, man, that dude, that guy must, I mean, he's got to have a wire disconnected somewhere in his brain to enjoy what he's doing right now. But, oh, uh, Bradley, Bradley's going to Ohio and, and Columbus, Ohio. Is, is this the last Sunday? going to Columbus, Ohio, and, and he's going to work for a dude that owns a painting company. And I I am, I don't know how much painting he's going to be doing, but just the thought of even getting asked to go and paint one day, I'd just say Columbus ain't worth it. I, I, I'd just say, man, I'd just soon be home. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But I, I, I'm telling you, I hate to paint. I hate it. I hate everything about it. But you know what? God generally just didn't give me the ability to do that. But you know what we got to do? We got to praise the Lord that he give, did give somebody the ability to do it. If you're going to speak, speak as the oracles of God. If you're going to minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. This is the ministry to our church. This is how we're ministering in our church. I want you to notice God uses, go, go next and Brother Charlie. God uses our spiritual gifts in, in the church. God uses our spiritual gifts in the church. There's this, this acronym here, SHAPE. And, 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 and where we get this, there, there may be somebody in this room and you may hear this and you may think, you know, th there's always a hole, especially in a Baptist church. <laughs> it, it seems like every church I've ever been in, there's always been holes in it. And, 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 and you may have the shape to fit the hole that is in your church. And so God uses things. He uses things like spiritual gifts. He uses things like our heart or our passion. What, what, here's the deal. My heart may be completely different. My passion may be completely different for something than yours is. Right? Like I don't have a passion to play the piano. Brother Daniel does. Praise God. He'd play that thing all, he'd play it for a living if he could. I don't have a desire or a heart or the passion to play the piano. But praise God, somebody does. There's somebody in this room, and, and you know what, man, you've you've got way more, you've got way more compassion within your heart than some of the rest of us do. Well, you know what? God called you to fill a need in your church based on that heart and that passion that you have inside of you. There's some of us in the room that we have different abilities than, than, than the rest of us. Do You have different abilities. You can do different things. And praise God for that. Some of us have different personalities and we need those personalities in our church. When I say genuine, I want you to make sure you get this. I'm not looking to change, and I'm not, look, I'm not looking for all of us in the room to change our personalities. God gave you your personality to use. God, God is not looking for you to change who you are and be a fake as far as personality goes. Does that make sense? I, I think some of us think, well, if I, if, I, if I really come to God and if I 
I really serve God with all my heart and with everything within me, you know, that, that God is going to, God's just going to expect me to change who I am. My personality is going to be changed. Listen, God does want to change who you are. God doesn't want to change how you are. God wants you to be you. God just don't want you to be a jerk. God wants you to be you, but God wants you to use who you are. And then number the, the last one there, E, experiences. God wants to use your experiences, your experiences of the past. God wants to use them. God wants to use the experiences of where you come from. God wants to use them. You say, why, uh, why, why would God want to use me? Well, just so happens you fit in some places based on some previous experience that you have. Uh, look, I'm not looking, we're not looking to wallow in our past experiences. Some of us got broken homes. And look, God, God is not, a, God's not looking for us to wallow in all that. God's looking for us to use that to show someone else it don't have to be that way. See, this is a key part in fulfilling goal number three in our church to establish disciples as an active participant in the spiritual life and service to the church. So let me, let me say... Make sure you get this down. Man, what, what, what are my spiritual gifts? Where is my heart? What about my abilities? What about my personality? What about my experience? Where can God use me? You know, if you've got the personality of a board, then you know what? Hey, man, making sure people feel welcome when they come in the door, that may not be your, your forte. <laughs> you know? You got the personality of a rock, man, hey, you know what? There's plenty of things you can do, but let's don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Uh, we're not putting you as the door greeter at Walmart, right? I mean, you got to be chipper and happy and, you know, really you got to be, uh, you know, I think you only get that way at Walmart uh, uh, if you're over, especially dealing with people at Walmart if you're over 75 because, you know, you can just, be cool with whatever over 75, you know what I mean? We dealt with the, the mission, the ministry of the local church. Now, I want, I want to talk to you about the, min, the mission in the world, concern our mission in the world. Get this, our, our ministry in the church is not the same as our mission in the world. Our ministry in the church is not the same as our mission in the world. Next bullet, fulfilling our ministry in the church does not exclude us from fulfilling our mission in the world. Now notice these two, they're completely different. They're, uh, they, they, they're, 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 they're pointing to... Two different things, the ministry in the church is not the same as the mission in the world. And, and why would we need to say that? Because a lot of times we substitute what we do in church for a mission in the world. We think, man, well, I do all this stuff in the church, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to fulfill my mission in the world. Where does that lead us to at this church? Well, it goes like this. We'll say we're, we're in the process of, of, of working, through, um, working through discipleship with somebody. And let's say that you have taken the last year and a half, two years, and you've went through the process of discipleship with somebody and you've taken them through the material. And, and even more so, you, you've helped them to come to a place to where they understand and they can articulate and, and they have somewhat came to fulfill the four goals, okay? Let's say we've gotten there and you come to me and say, man, I, hey, look, uh, I did this and, and, and hey, I'm ready for another one. See, I, I think sometimes if we're not careful, we will 
uh, the, the, the ministry in the church, we will take that and, and we will say that that is how we serve, that's what we do, but, but make sure you understand, it ain't always going to be the church's job to give you people that want to go through the process of discipleship. Are you, are you tracking when I say that? What, what, what am I saying? That your mission in the world is just as important as your ministry in the church. You see, we, we, we let, we let a van, and, and I'm, I'm grateful Miss Candace said, you know, hey, God has is, is dealt with my witness and how I'm witnessing. Because, see, here's the thing, man. We get so caught up in this thing we do on Sundays and Wednesdays is we forget that there's a whole world out there that's lost, that's never even heard the name of Jesus. Listen, we live in the Bible Belt, and the Bible Belt has lost its buckle. It, 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 it's, it, listen, everybody in the South is saved. Everybody around here is saved, man. You, you say, yeah, where you go to church? So-and-so. Well, do you know who the pastor is? No. When's the last time you went? Well, I attended online services two weeks in a row. Let's make sure we get this. Just because they're raised in Georgia doesn't mean they're saved. And we take it for granted that everybody that is raised under the shadow of a church steeple knows Jesus. And the fact of the matter is, they don't have an inkling of who Jesus is. I would say over 70% couldn't, 70% of Paulding Countyans couldn't articulate what the gospel was. Maybe 80, 90% couldn't articulate what the gospel actually is. They couldn't tell they they couldn't tell you what the gospel was. I'd say ninety nine percent of Paulding Countyans couldn't tell you why we even needed the gospel. You see, it's one thing to know the death, burial, and the resurrection. It's a whole other thing to understand that you were lost and needed the death, burial, and resurrection. It ain't hard to get people to come to saving faith. It's hard to get people to see their wretchedness and that they're lost. It ain't hard to get people to believe in death, burial, and the resurrection. It's hard to get them to believe that they're bad people and that from their birth they're going to die without Jesus Christ and they're going to suffer in eternity somewhere and unfortunately we know that place to be hell. What I'm saying is we have got to make sure that this no four that my four no more mentality is put to bed for the last time. And we say, God, you know what? I want to be on a mission all my life. So understand, fulfilling our ministry in the church does not exclude us from fulfilling our mission in the world. Number uh, no, no, the next bullet there. We have been given, we have all been given the, the same mission to fulfill the work of the Lord or to make disciples. And that's really the essence of goal number four to establish our disciple as an active participant of the work of the Lord. Now, just maybe you have never heard this before. I know some of you have, especially if you've been in here during uh, the training. But we want to make sure that we, uh, that we get this down again and make sure that we understand it. Why? Because we want to give a clear picture. Habakkuk 2.2, we want to write the vision so that they that read it, read it may run. Like, man, we can get this thing and we can run with it. All right, the work of the Lord involves three things. The work of the Lord involves three things. Now, this 
is the things from John that we were talking about earlier, John 17. We use John 17, 4. And when he was talking about, I have finished the work which thou, hast gave me, which thou gavest me to do, John 17, 6, it, Jesus says, I have manifested thy name. And he's talking about the men in which he, he, he brought with him, the 12 that she brought. He, he said, I have manifested thy name. He has manifested the name of God to these men. And, and we know this to be, we, we use this, win them, um, uh, win them, build them, and send them. So we're, we're to use the same thing. But I want you to look, as we win them, we understand this is, a pro, this is evangelism. This is evangelism. Evangelism is winning someone to Christ. It is the communication of the gospel to a lost person that results in their salvation. It is where the ministry of discipleship begins. This is where the ministry of discipleship begins. you got to get this in your heart, man. you got to get this deep within your soul that God wants you to do this. That God wants you... Listen, we've got to have people that are lost come to saving faith in Christ before we can ever get them to a place to where they can bring glory to God. Are, are, are you getting that? When, when we sang that song when, when, and, and, and earlier, and we was talking about when he was talking about bringing many sons to glory. And you, you don't think them are just words on a, on a screen, do you? Do you really want to see many sons bring glory to God? Do you really want to say, man, I, I, look, I, I hear the testimony, man. There's a lot of tremendous testimonies in this room. And dude, I, I look, I look back and I see some of his life before I ever met you, before God ever did that in your heart that he did. And I praise God for what he did. I mean, it thrills my soul to no end, to understand the depths by which God brung you to the place that you're at. But friend, I want you to listen right here. You, you can't get all that bottled up and say, man, this is mine. If it's such a good thing, if it's, su if it's as good as you say it is, then why ain't we sharing it with somebody else? If Jesus Christ is, is so good and the grace of God that He's given you is so good, then man, why are we not sharing that same testimony with people that don't know it? And we got to make sure that this ain't a program. You see, let me, let me throw this out there at you. We've traded spots. We've traded spots. The church has traded spots with what its intention was to what we made it, what we want it to be. You see, the church was never intended to be a place to where lost people come to get, to get saved. The church was to edify, to build, and to send people out to do the same thing. But, but, but the, the day and age, and somehow through our Roman mindsets, I, I'm guessing we have swapped it around, and we have now made the church the place where sinners come. And now there's no place to be where saints are sent. So, so here's the thing, the, the idea behind Jesus Christ mobilizing a group of people to go out into the world and win lost people to Jesus Christ, that's a farce, man, because that ain't what we do. We bring people to here to, here to make sure you preach to them that they need to be saved. Dang, man, how'd we miss it so bad? How did we jack it up that bad? I want to say a lot of it is uh, it's over the fact that that goal number one just ain't a real thing in our life. That we don't have a meaningful relationship with God through the Word of God and prayer. 
Because if we did, man, this whole idea of man manifesting the name of God to people that were around on a consistent basis wouldn't be a hard thing. It would be out of the overflow of the fact that we have been communing with God and we have this relationship with God that's meaningful and it's real and He's been talking to us and we've been talking to Him. And out of that, we, man, just the overflow of who we are. We strategically place ourselves in places where lost people are because we know we've had, we have been with God. And and while we're not isolated from the world because we've been with God, we're insulated from the world. And we can go and we can be like Jesus. We can walk our way through Samaria where, where we where 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 Jesus where Jesus was not even welcome, we can walk our way through Samaria. And we can find people that need Him. The first part to this whole thing is, is to win them. It's to win them through evangelism. And then the next one, so Charlie's to build them. Look what he said, John 17, 8. I have given them the words... I have given, and he says, I have given them the words which thou gavest me. I have given them the words, and, and, and we, we build them, we edify them, we bring them to a place of edification. Edification is the process of building the Word of God into a disciple's life that results in spiritual growth. In spiritual growth. Acts 20, verse 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Galatians 4, verse 19, My little children... Now, I want you to listen to this verse. My little children of whom... Now, now this whole deal, deal of my little children, if you'll look at the verse... My little children implies that these are spiritual children of, of, of Paul's. Meaning Paul has won these Galatians to Christ. But now look what happens. Of whom I travail in birth. What's that next word? What's that word? Again. Of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Now we're not talking, we're we're not talking about lost again. We're talking, we're we're talking about being about Christ being formed in us. Yeah, everybody in the room understands the day you get saved that Christ wasn't like fully formed in you, right? Like, Like maybe you're a much better Christian than me. But sometimes I, 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 you know, I'm like, dang, Lord. I got way better church members than I am a Christian. (laughs) And then I think to myself, we're all working through this thing of Christ being formed in us. Can you get that, man? Do you get that God wants to form Christ in you? I'm talking about be fully formed. Like like that that, that is, man, that's a thing in your life that we ought to strive after. Ephesians 4 and verse 12 and 13, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ, till we all come to unity of till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Same lingo all over again. Unto, uh, uh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God is trying to work out the full figure of Christ in us. And then number... C, sending, sending. Now notice what Jesus says, I have sent them into the world. 
I have sent them into the world. I think, man, if we, if we get this, if we can kind of get this within our spirit and we understand that there are no professional missionaries. There is no professional missionaries. You know, them, them guys we support every month around here, they're not professional missionaries. There's no such thing. Man, we, we like to do things like, ah, oh, man, we're, we're going to pay somebody to go overseas and serve the Lord. No, that's just a, that's a different depth of missionary. Right? God, God has called us all to be missionaries. God has called us all to go into the world. Equipping is the process of a disciple that results in their being sent into the world. Their sphere, this is supposed to say sphere, sphere of influence for the purpose of winning, building, and sending others. Now, now get this, God has given you a sphere of influence. And God wants to send you into that sphere of influence wherever that may be. It's a weird thing. For me right now, I never figured it would be like this, but for me right now, God, God sent me into little, little people's lives uh, from a stinking ball field. I, I'm, you know, I'm like, dang, I, I didn't ever mean to do this. I didn't ever mean, but, but here's the thing. God don't care what I mean. God, God ain't worried about where I'm trying to go. God's just worried about where I'm willing to go. And if I'm not willing to be on a mission wherever my sphere of influence is, then I'm not really being sent. I'm being partial to my own fleshly and carnal desires. John 20 and verse 21, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, so send I you. Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 4 and verse 11, He gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Understand that God is trying to use this place to equip people that they may be sent out. What do we want to do? Man, I would love to in five years see a, another church birthed out of this church because they spent the last five years getting equipped and a burden far bigger than themselves. Now, I, I, I want to run this by you, brother. Dan, you can come play real quick if you, if, if you would, bro. Let me try to we we'll try to wrap this up right here real quick. I want you to notice there's, there's 12 represented, the, the 12 as representatives of people in churches. The 12 as representative of, of people in churches. Now, I didn't put all this down, but you've got a spot there at the bottom of your eye and you want to write it down. You can write down this, some are Judases. Some are Judases. They show up for everything. They play the part. They do well to cover up themselves. They even act like they care about things at times, especially money. But they're never really saved, never really came to saving faith. There's some that are like the eight. The eight, they're, they're good people. They really mean well. They walk with the Lord and they have a part. And then there's some that's like the three, Peter, James, and John. They have a deeper and more intimate relationship with God than, than any of the rest of them. 
And in turn, he allows them to go places that none of the rest of them ever get to go. They see other things that... And, and some people would call that not fair. But equal ain't always fair. God lets those that have the deeper, more intimate relationships with Him, He allows them to go places other people will never get to go. Get this, takes them on the Mount of Transfiguration, and He allows them to see things that others don't get to see. I mean, He literally lets them in on the glorious part of that second coming. Just a glimpse of who He is. Who He really is in that transfiguration. And then there are those like John. There are those like John. Always doing what they're supposed to be doing. Always where they're supposed to be. They get this right here. They have a deeper love for the Lord than the other two. They have a deeper, and I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say, I am not John. I want to be John, but I'm not John. I want to be John so bad. I, I mean, I, I, but I have, I have Peter's stupid disease at times. I tend to say very stupid things when I shouldn't be saying them. Some things roll across the billboard of my mind and instead of the filter taking root, taking place in my life, it just spews out like vomit. And, and once words get out there, I mean, I'm, I'm scrambling to get them mugs back. I'm not John. I hope you are. I hope you, I want to be John. I want to be John. I want to be cuddled up by my Savior. I want to hear the heartbeat of God like none of the rest of them got to hear it. I want to love John. Listen, I want to be the one that, that Jesus would look at on the cross and say, John, behold thy mother. Mary, behold thy son. I want to be that one that Jesus would entrust the very earthly mother that God gave him. But I'll go on record right now and say I'm not there. Maybe you are. Maybe you love him like no. Maybe you love him more than anybody else in this room and praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you're not a Judas. I pray you're not a Judas. I pray you're not playing the part. I pray that you're not just saying the name, doing it in name only. I, I'm praying you're not doing that. I'm praying you really are saying, if you're not, man, this morning would be a great day for you to just get slapped, born again. Quit playing games with God. Quit playing around with God. Pulling God's strings here and there and thinking that you're getting somewhere in life and just get it over with and sell out and say, God, I'm done. Be born again. Maybe you're like the eight, and you're man, you're 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 good people. You mean really well. You walk with the Lord, and, and you have a part in this work, and you're gonna have a part. And praise God for you. Nobody's taking anything away from the eight. But man, I'm just gonna tell you, I really desire to be in the three, at least. I want to be in that one camp, but I really desire to be with Peter, James, and John. I really desire to be with, with Jesus in that place to where I can see Him like nobody else sees Him. To where this book comes alive like, like nobody else, like, like it doesn't come alive to other people. Like it unlocks the secrets of its own heart right before my very eyes. Why? Because I love Him. Because I want to I wanna be with Him. Because I want to follow Him even though I'm stupid. And even though I mess up. And even though I have a real bad problem with my own flesh at times. I want to be at least in the three. I think if you make it to the three, I think you make it all the way. I think if you make it to the three, I think you'll finish this thing all the way. 
I think you'll run your race and you'll get done and I think you will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. You know, not everybody that makes it, you know, not everybody that makes it is going to hear well done. Some are going to hear, hear you are a very unprofitable servant. Run around in the shame of their own unfaithfulness to their Lord that saved them. You said, do you think it'll be like that? I think if the Bible's true, it'll be like that. Well, I'm just be glad to make it. I don't think you will. I think you'll get there and be very sorrowful that you didn't take it more serious while you was here. To strive to be in that, that three count. Strive to be in that one. To strive to love Him like nobody else loves Him. To strive to be able to take care of, of the things He gave he had here on this earth like, like nobody else. And listen, he had here on this earth the ministry that God gave him. And I think if this church can get a burden for the work of the Lord that God help us, we can tear out like a tangent and just do work that God called us to do and not have to do it for the praise of men, not have to do it for the pats on the back, not have to do it for the glory that looks when we look around this church and say, somebody, look at me, look what I've done. I think if we get there, man, we can burn the world up with the gospel. Man, I, I hope, I hope there's some pastors that come out of this church. I hope they're four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, ten years old now. I hope they hear the gospel in this church. I hope they bail out of here on fire for God and do something besides what we've always done and do something with that that God's given them. Now you got to decide. You got to decide in that whole 12 camp. I hope you're not a Judas. Well, let's go ahead and say that. If you're a Judas, you need to get saved this morning. But if you're not a Judas, then you got to decide what do you want to do with this work of the Lord business? God, do I really want to do that with the rest of my life? God, do I really want, man, do I, do I really want to, do I really want to get into all that, will you? You want to hear well done? You want to please your Lord? You want to be pleasing unto the Lord? Man, I do. Even as, as, as ignorant as I am sometimes. Even in my own ignorance sometimes. I think, man, I just want to be pleasing to the Lord. This morning, we got to make decisions that impact our eternity that impact other people's eternity. Every head bowed. I hope you're not a Judas in the room this morning, but maybe you are. Maybe you played the game, played the part. You say, Brother Lee, don't you pray for me. If I die right now, I have no assurance of my own personal salvation. I have no assurance of my own personal salvation. Would you slide your hand up? I just want to pray for you. You slide up, slide right back down. I have no, all right, see that one? See that one? I have no assurance of my own personal salvation. Slide up, slide right back down. All right? Several hands in the room went up. Say, so I have no assurance of my own salvation. Praise God. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Making that stand big and bold and as hard as it is. Thank you for making that stand this morning. Maybe you're in here and you say, man, I hear the whole work of the Lord thing and, and I, I see the eight 
And, and look, I'm cool with being part of the eight and praise God for the eight. But maybe there's somebody else in here and you say, dude, I want to be in that three camp. I want to see what others don't see. I want to go where others don't go. And friend, I want you to know when I say that, it is possible for you to see what others won't see and for you to go where others won't go. You want to go to the other side of the world and minister to people that you can't talk to? God will send you there. You want to go across the street to the other side of town and minister to people that you never thought you'd get to minister to? God will send you there. But you got to want the three, man. You got to want to be in that camp. You got to want to be in that camp. Maybe there's one in here that say, Brother Lee, I'm, I, I want to be that one. I want to hear him. I want to hear his voice like nobody hears it. I want to hear his heart beat like nobody hears it beat. I want the Spirit of God to work in me like he worked in John. Here's what we're going to do. You're in here and you raise your hand for salvation. I want to give you an opportunity to come. You say, I ain't got no assurance of my own salvation. I want to give you an opportunity to come. You're in here and you say, man, Brother Lee, I'm content being a part of the, of the eight and praise God. But there's somewhere in you that says, you know what? I, I, I want to be I want to be of the three. I want God to take me places because He can trust me. I want God to do things with me because He knows He can trust me. Brother Daniel's going to sing. I wonder how many of you would, would make your way out of your seat. You'd find you a place in this altar. You're in here and you're lost. I, 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 I'll, I'll make sure that we find somebody. I'll help you or somebody else in this room will help you come to saving faith in Jesus Christ. But if you would, right now, where you are, as Brother Daniel sings, would you take a step of faith? Get out of that pew. Get out of that pew. Right where you are. Meet me here in, in, this, in the front, in the altar, and I'll make sure that you get exactly what you need. Brother Daniel, you say, would you come this morning? Would you come? As Brother Daniel sings, once you get up out of your seat, Thank just you real quietly, just get up out of your seat. Maybe you're in here and you say, Brother Lee, I want to be that three. Would you come? Would you come? Make a name the world remembers. But all an empty world can sell is empty dreams. I got lost in the come on. That it was a you have no assurance of your salvation. Come on. Come on. No, I wouldn't wait. While God's doing I would the not wait. Name to remember. And I, I don't want to leave a legacy. Would you come? I don't care if they remember. Would you come this morning? Only Jesus. Come this morning. Only Jesus. You're here, man. You're here. Listen. A few of you have no assurance. If you die right now where you're going, let me make a plea with you one more time. God's dealing with you this morning. You're not promised another chance. Let's do this one more time. I don't know nobody looking around right here. Several of you in here. Nobody looking. Several of you in here. And you, man, you you made that known to me. And you said, Brother Lee, I, I don't know. I don't have any assurance of my own personal salvation. You said, that's me. I want you to listen to me. No gimmicks, no games. If you want Jesus Christ to save you this morning, you want to quit playing around, quit playing the game, 
name in the name. You want to be different. You want God to change you. You want God to save your soul. God will do that this morning. But I wonder if you if you if you raised your hand earlier, right side or left side, you raised your hand in here this morning. I want you to just look at me just for a second. I want you to look at me just for a second. So all of you in this room that are looking at me, you realize God will save you right now? If you want God to save you this morning, and you mean it, I promise you somebody in this room, me or somebody else, will take a Bible and show you exactly what it means. So here's what I want to do. I want to make one, one last plea before Brother Daniel sings this last verse. Give you one more shot at it. If any of you guys, you want to get out of your seat, come to this altar. You say, you're not comfortable with me. I'll, I get, I'll point you to a lady. Sorry, I'll point you to another man and show you what it means to come to faith in Christ. But I wouldn't gamble on my eternity. This is too serious of a thing. And God's gave you the shot. Yeah, God's gave you the opportunity. God sent the Spirit of the Spirit to convict you. So this morning, let's make our let's make it real. Let's make it right. Brother Daniel, you sing one more verse. If you're serious, you meant business with God, you want God to save you. Won't you just if you just meet me right here in this altar, man? If you'll take the first step, God will take the rest of you. Go ahead, Brother Daniel. Hear the voice of love that's on, calling. Mr. Rob. There's a cheer that waits for you. There's a friend who understands everything you you're going through. You need to come. You come on, man. Come, you come on. But you keep standing at a distance in the shadow of your shame. There's a light of hope that's shining. Won't you come and take your place?
thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit we have in this church. Thank you, Lord, for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Lord, for using Calvary to draw men and women to salvation. Using your son as he was hung between heaven and earth to draw those that you would save. God, I pray this morning, Lord, that you'd, you'd take this message and imprint this on our heart as a church. God, that, that when somebody asks us, what, what do we do at Greater Hope Baptist Church? Will we do the work of the Lord? Lord, that that be our all-consuming goal. Lord, that we do the work of the Lord. God, that we don't have any jazzy mission statement or missions philosophy, God, but Lord, we do the work, we do the work of the Lord. God, I, I pray, Lord, that you you take people, God, that, that may have have just been flying by the seat of their pants in church for years and God you change them through your through your remarkable power God help us give us all a burden to, to strive to see things others never get to see and to experience things others never get to experience with you God will glorify you and will praise you for all that you do in Jesus name Amen Amen. All right. Bless the Lord.